So one of the aspects of this work I want to talk to you about is the notion of what the vocal instrument actually is. So contrary to popular belief, it's not just about our throat, our vocal cords, or what we know as the larynx. It is the entire body. So we need to tune the whole body when we're using our voices. So we are really talking about head to toe engagement of our entire physique in the production of voice and sound. So when, in order to really train ourselves to be able to do this, we have to begin with an instrument that is then properly aligned. And so we talk about alignment a lot in terms of the spine and the head, and that is all part of it. So having excellent posture, for example, is a great starting point. So if you already know you have some issues with your posture, that's something you're going to need to be working on because to have really good in line, alignment is going to help us with vocal clarity and power. Throughout this workshop, you're going to be working on whole body engagement. And I have several exercises that I'll be sharing with you that I'll be expecting you to be working on in the process um, all the way through. And I'll be expecting you to do so later in life as you're continuing to build on your voice and preparing for any big speeches that you have coming up. So to begin with, we're going to talk about this, this part of our head. So we're going to talk from head all the way down to toe. So um, whether you're aware of it or not, the cranium is, is a chamber actually for resonation. And we do talk about it a little, it's like doesn't resonate tons, but you can, you can feel it. If you hum, you can feel this part of your head resonating. Um, this is where we have what we call the head voice. Lots of singers talk about their, their head voice. It's literally that they're making this part of their head, their upper register, resonate sound. So all of our body has to become a great at resonating sound. And in order to do that, we have to work, practice. We have to warm all of those parts up. We have to make sure that there's no tension being held anywhere in our body. So it, will, it, it really will help to reverberate and resonate that rich, powerful sound that we want for our public speaking engagements. So, so here's the, the head voice, right? So the cranium is our head voice. And that also here as we begin to move down, these are all what we call our facial resonators. Again, they're really good at resonating sound. If you put your fingers like right here and you go, make that noise, you can feel the vibration right through here, through your cheekbones and your nasal resonators right here. Already, if I go, if I place my voice right here to my nasal resonators, it changes the sound and tone of my voice. Right? So I could say, hello, how are you? How are you doing? And maybe if I'm working on a particular script, I'm going to be wanting to create a character that speaks from their nasal resonators. I can do that because I've been practicing and I know where to place the sound. And there are all kinds of elements in the mouth that also help us produce sound. You probably already know this. You know that the lips help you to pr produce sound and make particular noises. Um, and to help shape particular vowel as well as consonant sounds. Our teeth also help us. T we do, you know, our T's, for example. T um, our tongue. Our tongue is an extraordinary muscle, not only for eating and digesting food, but our tongue helps us to actually project sound as well as make all of those intricate little um, shapes that create all of the letters and consonants that we need in order to be heard clearly. So the tongue is amazing and we really have to work that tongue out. That muscle needs to be worked out just like any other muscle in your body at the gym. So, so I'm going to give you lots of tongue twisters and exercises to really help you not only to develop the tongue for um, what we call articulation exercises, but to also project 
to actually project sound from the mouth. So it's not happening here, it's happening here. Um, the jaw. Our jaw is one that we tend to hold a lot of tension in. And we need this t our jaw to be nice and open, to project sound like a megaphone. It needs to be open and wide when we are needing to speak all the way to the back of the room. We need our jaws to be loose with no tension. So again, we're going to look at exercises that will help us to release our jaw, to make it nice and open. And, and, and then it has a greater influence for projecting sound, making it more powerful and clear. Then we move down. Of course, the voice box then, um, we have our vocal cords, which aren't really cords, they're vocal folds. And vocal folds, I'm going to talk more about this in the hygiene section, vocal hygiene section, but they are um, really just little, little folds that rub against each other really fast and vibrate to create sound. Then we have our chest resonators, and our chest resonators are included within that. Well, of course, our, our lungs, which create the breath that we need, um, the diaphragm, which helps to make the breath come in and out, and as well as all of the chambers within the chest to help amplify sound. So as we move then down through the body, and just underneath our diaphragm, we have our lower belly. The Japanese like to refer to this area as the hara. The hara is a space that is just about one inch below your navel. And this is considered the, the seat of your power. It's powerful presence, as well as we can use this power for our voices. So I like to really, you know, work with the hara and, and think about breathing deeply there and also to use that part of my body when I'm standing and I'm speaking, particularly if I'm projecting to the other side of the room or all the way to the back of the house if I'm in an auditorium. So you want to think about, about really sort of that area of your body as, as part of the powerful uh, foundation that you need in order to project your voice. Moving even further down, you have your hips. So you want to make sure that you don't have hip tension. Um, and then that is on the foundation of your legs. And your legs also need to be nice and relaxed. Uh, you don't want to be like shifting too much while you're speaking because that, again, takes away your power and presence. And um, you don't want to be holding tension in your legs, otherwise you might fall over. I have seen that happen with actors where they get really super stiff. And, and they were in the middle of an audition and they actually passed out. So you, you want to make sure you're nice and relaxed, um, have a nice relaxed body from basically the top of your head all the way down to your toes. And then the last uh, aspect really is your feet. So many um, singers, for example, will be barefoot as they sing because they know that the connection that your feet have to the earth is part of your power engagement as well. So you want to make sure that your feet are nice and stable, that they're giving you that, that real foundation that you need, you're not locking your knees, uh, and that you're fully relaxed and able to use your body to power your voice.